Hunger Games franchise is back and does it have Katniss? No, we are back 60 years into the past with the story of President Snow and what makes him tick. And it turns out, can't take my charm, can't take my humor. a lot of singing. Hey guys, my name is Joseph Curtis, and if you love movies just as much as me, you have come to the right place. Now do me a huge solid and click that like and subscribe button. Also, if you want to follow me on the following social platforms, that would be great as well. Now let's start talking The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Snow mentors and develops feelings for the female District 12 tribute during the 10th Hunger Games. My overall general feelings about this film is that it's really good. It brings back what we love about The Hunger Games, thrills, action and characters that move us and really the biggest things that i wanted to talk about are right here in the beginning the performances this is top-notch acting specifically from the clear standout the main actor tom blith who plays snow in a very captivating and very vulnerable performance where you see the humanity side and that's really the whole point of the film like who even was snow and obviously he probably wasn't this crazy old man that we see in the other four films <laughs> Who was he in the past? I think Tom Blith did a fantastic job bringing that humanity aspect of a character that we grow to hate. And I love when films do that, that, that take an idea as a villain arc and make that the whole point of the film. That, that's what intrigued me about this story. Another fantastic performance is Peter Dinklage, who plays the actual maker of The Hunger Games. He is so good. He realized what his thoughts and actions have brought out through the Hunger Games, you see that all over his face. From the very first scene you're introduced with him, you just see nothing but a man with regret. Another performance, Viola Davis. I, I don't need to sell you on her performance. She kills it. She does come across as a little cartoony, but honestly, ever since the Hunger Games franchise happened, Everybody in Pan Am, the capital, is a little cartoony. She's just the most cartoony, and you really dig it. At first, it'll throw you off, but you learn to accept her performance. And the last great performance is Jason Schwartzman. That is a really interesting name to say. He was so good in this. He, he plays the ancestor to the other host in the future. One sec. The light went out. There we go, we're back. There are moments where you're watching The Hunger Games and he'll be making comments throughout moments that are supposed to feel intense. And I and I understand what they're trying to go for. They're trying to show how disgusting their society is. It's kind of like, honestly, the gladiator battles where people would go in, get their drinks, their food, and start screaming at people as if they're toys, as if they're, they're playthings. And that's kind of what The Hunger Games represents. It's how disgusting society has become. And you get those moments where he makes these little funny remarks as people are dying. It just happens too often and it kind of comes across as totally different films where it's a comedy and then all of a sudden it's a super dark film. I get what they're trying to do and it works half the time. The other time, it just didn't need to be as a parent. But other than that, he was great. Another performance that was good, but clearly they were cast because they have an amazing voice. And I want to first say that Rachel Zegler is a star. She, ever since I saw her in West Side Story, incredible, incredible girl, and her voice is like that of the gods. She's flawless with her singing. There is too much singing in this film. Also, what threw me off with her character, and I don't know why I didn't expect it, I guess I just didn't really hear that accent in the other films um, from District 12, she has a super southern country twang accent like what do you mean snow i wanted to be bought into it and for some reason maybe i'm gonna go see it again this week i just couldn't get behind it it just threw me off the entire time that i was watching her on screen i'm like no like i, I get it it's acting it's acting and she does a good job but that accent and the singing, it was just all too much at times. There were moments though, where I felt like where she was singing, it was justified. It was beautiful and it, and it told a story within those songs and obviously all the songs do, but it's how they're implemented and how they're executed through most of the film, I found to be a bit jarring. Now moving on to the actual Hunger Games aspect, this is bloody, it's brutal, it feels rustic and dark. Now I'm not saying this is the best Hunger Games of catching fire like level, that, that was just amazing. And, and this one comes close. It's definitely better. I will say this. It is, this movie's better than Mockingjay Part 1 and 2. Part 1 was a dull bore. Part 2 just 
It had action, but it concluded in a way that I didn't find satisfying. Speaking of conclusions, I'll get to that part later. For at least the first half of this film, really the first two acts, they're incredible. It is engaging, it's thrilling, and you're thrown into the world of Pan Am, the capital, in a way that you haven't seen before. Previous films, it was really about the districts and the rebellion, and in this one, it's about snow and the people behind the scenes, and there's even subclasses within the capital, which was really unique, and I didn't really see that coming. And of course, there's always gonna be that in societies. Even the ones that think that they're better than everyone else, there's always gonna be the little people. That's what made it interesting in this film, is snow is part of that lower class society society within this upper class society that pushes down other people and makes other people kill each other for fun. You even have that perspective within Snow's world. When you mix in that with this whole aspect of you have all these other mentors who are trying to have their mentee, their Hunger Games person win, it just throws in a whole different perspective of the way that we have perceived the Hunger Games. We were first with the rebels, but now we're with the elites mixed in now with the relationship between Tom Blith Snow and Rachel Zegler's Lucy, which they have amazing chemistry, by the way. Their, their scenes together, I fully bought into their romance and I loved every moment with them. And by the time you get to the midway point with the Hunger Games, it is so engaging. Like I said, it is brutal. And there are so many moments where you're not really thrown into a Hunger Games arena that's very good looking or they clearly took their time to make sure that this was a very engaging experience for the viewer. No, this is the 10th annual Hunger Games. They're still learning about how, how to go about in different ways to entertain their audience. And that's really what this movie was about. Marketing scheme to get people hooked back into the Hunger Games to make you feel connected to the individual contestants. By the time The Hunger Games ends and you get to the third act, the movie screeches to a halt. And this movie genuinely needed 20 more minutes to justify certain circumstances that happen in the final 10 to 15 minutes. It's good ideas, but they're executed so quickly and there's no time to let moments breathe for characters like Snow to have all these thoughts going in his head. What should he do? Is he really this kind of person or is he this kind of person? You throw in the character of Lucy Gray, who also is supposed to be part of that conflict, and it just felt rushed. Each chunk of the first and second and third act could have been an hour long each and really could have flushed this out to a three hour epic film. And honestly, I don't understand why they didn't do that. People will go see this film. People want to see another Hunger Games movie. The runtime could have been more deserved if they added 20 more minutes to let those moments between Snow, Lucy, breathe. Overall, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes tackles power, control, and most of all, human nature. How people are not who they say they are. And with that being said, I'm going to give it a solid seven out of 10. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this review. It really, really means a lot. Please let me know your thoughts on this film down in the comment section, or if you haven't seen it yet, are you even excited for the return of this franchise? Anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to be blessed.